Hi, this is the lecture overview 4.5 and 5.4. These two sections have kind of been fused together because they are kind of related. Um, 4.5 is kind of an offshoot of though of 5.1, so they're kind of tied in together. And um, uh, 5.4 is kind of tied into 5.3. They're kind of they're kind of related as well. The only thing is, if you look at the my first example. Yeah, this came out of 5.1. This came up a little quick example that you might see out of 5.1. It's f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And this is when we did, remember, Kobe. You know, it crosses when it's odd. It bounces when it's even. And uh, so at x squared, at 0, it bounces. And 3 and negative 4, these are the x-intercepts. And remember, when we were graphing these things, we wasn't really totally uh, concerned about how low these things go. We were just kind of concerned about the shape that it makes. In this case, it's a w. And uh, so this is kind of what you would see back in 5.1, uh, well, one of the typical problems. Now, in 4.5, you might see a problem that looks like this, and you're going to say, well, that kind of looks like this example that you just did. It's actually taking part of the question and asking about it is what they're doing. If you notice, the same function, but they're saying, when is this function greater than zero? So what they're basically asking you to do is look at the graph, and determine whether the graph is greater than zero. Now remember, greater than zero, it's above the axis. And less than zero, it's below the axis. So if, you, if you're asked this question and you have a graph standing in the face, like we have here, then it's easy to answer the question. So you either say, when is this function greater than zero? You would come over here and say, well, it's above zero on this part of it. It's above zero on this part of it. Everywhere else it's below zero, so the x's on this side are above and the x's on this side are above. So to answer this question based on the graph, like I said, it's quite simple. It's going to be negative infinity to negative 4, union 3 to infinity. Because on the right side of 3, it's above the axis, which makes it greater than zero. And on the left side of negative 4, it's above the axis, which makes it greater than zero as well. So these, this is the solution to this problem. And as you could probably are probably thinking about right now, well, do that, does that mean I have to draw the graph on every one of these things to actually to answer the question? You could, and some people choose to do that, and that's fine because it gives them more practice on the other ones as well. Anyway, when it comes to test time, and uh, I say, well, you don't really have to, but what you really need to do is at least draw the x-axis. Don't be concerned about the y-axis, but just at least draw the x-axis. So you don't have to sketch the whole graph when you're doing them, but at the very minimum, draw the x-axis. So, and then what you do is say, well, it's going to be the x-intercepts are going to be 3, negative 4, and 0. And you place those on the number line because that's what the x-axis is. It's just a number line. So it's going to be a negative 4, 0, and 3. So I'm basically duplicating these three points on the graph. And then some people will say, now what do you do? Well, you could actually test points. That's another option that people do. They'll say, okay, I'll test negative 5 and see if it's above or below. And if you do, you'll find out. You can put negative 5 back in, and you'll notice that it's a greater than 0. And then they'll test negative 4 to 0 and test negative 2. And as you probably know by now, I'm not a big fan of testing points. And because I'm pretty lazy when it, com when it comes down to it. So this is a W, right? Well, that's what I would say. If you want to test one point, that's fine. Then no, just remember Kobe. This one's crossing, this one's bouncing, this one's crossing. Okay? So if you want to test one point, then you'll test it maybe up here. And then since it crosses, it'll be down here, and it bounces, it'll be down here again, and crosses back up here. So sometimes you'll see me in class do this. And those x is referred to, this is where the graph is located, between those two numbers. So this little x here is referring to this little bell down here. This little x refers to this little bell. This little x that's up here is referring to this arrow. This x is referring to this arrow. Okay? So, but I don't do any of that. I mean, to be quite honest with you, I'm just giving you what some people are more comfortable with. I still look at the graph in itself, in my head. And then, so instead of doing these x and stuff, this is kind of how I do it. I say, okay, you got 2x to the fourth. So 2x to the fourth, I remember what I learned in 5.1. Oh, 2x to the fourth, the ends go up. And so I said, okay, the ends go up, crosses, bounces. So I just kind of do this. 
So I kind of duplicate the graph, but without the y-axis. So in essence, I, yeah, I am doing the graph again, but I am not drawing the whole graph. So there is a lot of ways you can do it. Testing points, some people will swear by that. They love that technique because it's safer to them. Okay, I don't think it is. I think it's actually a little bit more dangerous because if you test a point wrong, you're going to get the wrong answers. So testing points can be quite dangerous, especially when you start putting negative numbers in this stuff. And because all it takes is a sign, sign error. If you, say, if you say it was a positive 4 and it should have been a negative 4, then that, that whole region will be wrong. So it's, it's, a, it's your call, really. So I just like remembering what the general shapes are. If I can remember what the general shapes are and with the cross or the bounce, with, you know, Kobe, I think it's easier that way. So, but either way, it's uh, negative infinity, negative 4, and 3 to infinity. So now this next example, example uh, uh, 2, 5.3. Now, back in 5.3, what we would have done is we would have graphed a linear over linear. We would have went through the I have a code with holes. And uh, you would have found out the vertical asthma was at negative 1. The x-intercept was at 3 because the, the topic was 0, uh, 3. Uh, negative 6 because it's negative 6 over 1. These go away when x is 0. Anyway, I sketched the whole graph just like what we did back in 5.3. Should be very, that one should be an easy one for you. And then what I'm asked to do here is where is the function less than 0? Now, if you look at the graph, it's very easy to determine that. Because less than zero means where is it below the graph? So right here. So I'm shading the part that is less than zero. So this is above, this is above, that's not my answer. I want the parts that are less than zero. So if you look at the graph, it looks like it's less than zero between what two numbers? Negative one and three. Okay? So that's your answer. Negative one to three. But like we did over there, we don't really want to have to go through the eye, have a go with holes and sketch the whole graph. Well, at least some people don't. Uh, do the whole graph just to get that answer. So what we'll do is we'll do the same thing we did back in this one down here. We will just draw the x-intercept and ask myself this question. Well, where does it, when does it cross over? Well, it crosses over at x-intercepts and at vertical asymptotes. So I said I'll find those numbers. So what are the x-intercepts? Well, the x-intercept is at 3, which is duplicating that. And uh, uh, negative 1 is the vertical asymptote, which duplicates this vertical down the line. So those are your key points. So, And then some people will just say, OK, now just test a point. And if you test a point over here, there's going to be a big x up here. If you test negative 1 to 3, it's going to be a big x down here. And if you test number over here, like 4 or 5 or something like that, it's going to be up here. And that part up here is going to be referring to this part. This x right here will be referring to this part, which is what you want. And uh, if you test them over here, it's going to be up here. So that's going to be referring to this little backwards L shape here. So uh, it doesn't really matter the way, I, the way you would do it. But I will say uh, on these types of problems, I do it a little different way too. Um, you remember what the horizontal asymptote was? It was 2, right? So at the ends, it's got to get close to 2. So it's getting close to 2 this way and it's getting close to 2 this way. Both numbers are above the axis. So at the ends, it should be getting close to 2. That makes it up here and up here, because they're both 2. 2 is above. And since they cross over, it's got to be down here. A lot of people say, that's too much on my plate. Can we keep it simple? Yeah, like I said, you can test points. I just keep saying that's that way right there, testing points. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're really, really cautious, that's probably your best bet if you're cautious. So the problem is, is students are not cautious sometimes and they will go through it really quick. Missing a sign is deadly. You can't miss a sign. So and uh, so anyway, so that's how I do it. I look at the horizontal asymptotes on the end. <clears throat> that's easy for me to remember. So it's two on the ends, which means it's got to be below because it just crosses over in the middle. And so these little x's help me find the answer. So I'm looking for the part that's less than zero, so it would be this part right here. So between negative 1 to 3. So you got to find your niche. you got to find the way you like how to do it. If you like my way, then great. But if you like testing points, I have no problem with that. you just got to find the way you like the best. And that's it.